Uh, greetings, math fans. All right, so today what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about um, the asymptotes, the maxes and mins, and the domains and ranges of all the different trig functions we've learned. Okay, so obviously we've learned six different trig functions: sine, cosine, tangent, and then the reciprocal functions: secant, cosecant, and cotangent. Okay, so let's kind of get started here. Um, so again, I'm going to be talking about asymptotes. Again, as I talked before, we don't like to really talk about asymptotes because, you know, if your parents are listening to this video right now, they're just like, what? Your teacher's swearing? How horrible. Okay. So, you know, I'm sure your parents are listening right now. We're going to refer to them as donkey purses, and then your parents are much happier. Okay. I'm sure they're not really that mad right now anyway. Okay. So let's keep going here. Anyway, talk about asymptotes. Talk about max and min. And we're going to talk about domain and range. Okay, so let's just start out with our, our basic function here. If I say y equals sine of x, okay, it's the, um, the least favorite of uh, the Titanic people, and too soon, sorry, and then y is equal to cosine of x. Okay, some really basic functions here. Um, first of all, you guys need to know there are no asymptotes, right? I mean, you guys know that because it's defined everywhere, right? There's no undefined location for sine and cosine. So what we can do is we can say our domain is then from negative infinity to positive infinity. That's kind of nice. That's pretty easy. In fact, it doesn't matter what the function looks like as far as it can be any kind of sine or any kind of cosine graph, the domain is always, 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 always negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, super, super easy. All right? And let's think uh, just for the basic functions. Let's let's concentrate on... Uh, doesn't, like I said, it doesn't really matter. Let's use y equals sine of x, just so we can concentrate on one. They're really the same for cosine as well. Um, how high does this thing go? Do you guys agree it goes up to 1, right? Because what? The sine of what is 1? The sine of pi over 2 is 1. And how low does it go? Well, it goes down to negative 1, because right, the sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. If you guys remember just the kind of the graph here. So here's your graph, right? And at pi over 2, you got 1. And this is pi, and then 3 pi over 2, it's negative 1. So you can say the range was basically from negative 1 to 1. And notice I have brackets here, very important, because it includes those values. Okay? So the lowest value can be is negative 1, the highest is positive 1. And of course, what changes that? Um, the range, right? If I add, uh, have an amplitude, right? Or if I have a vertical shift. So kind of let's think, let's actually do a little bit more complicated problem here. If I said y is equal to uh, 2 plus 4 times the sine of 2 parentheses x minus pi over 8. Now first of all, I want to tell you here, math fans, this part right here doesn't matter for domain range. It just doesn't matter, okay? Uh, I know it's going to go from negative infinity to positive infinity for, so let's write that, domain negative infinity to positive infinity, okay? The range of things is gonna change. So think logically, you guys are smart kids, okay? Right, right, do you guys agree that the two here is the shift, so it's gonna go up two? So it's gonna start at two, that's where you draw your dotted line, you guys remember that? So it's your dotted line at two. And you guys agree you're gonna go up four from there and you're gonna go down four from there. So if I go up 4, I'm going to add 4. So I get 6 is my highest point. And if I'm going to go down 4, I'm going to subtract that 4, and I'm going to get negative 2. So guys, that is what my range is. My range is from negative 2 to 6. OK? So pretty easy. Just kind of have to look at your amplitude and your vertical shift. The first thing you do is look at your vertical shift and then you go, oh, okay, now I look at my amplitude and I go up four from there and down four from there. So you add four and you subtract four and that's how you get your range. Okay, so let's try another quick example here. Um, y is equal to negative seven minus 12 times the cosine of, eh, it doesn't matter, right? Who cares? So of course my domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity, because it always is that for sine or cosine. And uh, our range, do you guys agree? It's going to be, think about, again, here's your dotted line. 
and you're going to go, the lowest point is going to be negative 7 minus 12. You're going to go down 12. And again, this negative really doesn't matter. It's an amplitude, right? It's 12 is the amplitude. So it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. It's still going to go down 12 from there, and it's going to go up 12 from there. So if I subtract that, I get negative 19. And negative 7, if I go up 12 from there, I get positive 5. So there you go. Your range is from negative 19 to positive 5. Okay, again, brackets are important. Okay, pretty easy stuff, right? That's sine and cosine. Okay, pretty good stuff. All right, so let's talk about um, y is equal to secant of x and y is equal to or cosecant of x and then secant of x. Okay. So it's a little bit different, but here's the first thing I won't, I'm not going to ask you to do. So I won't ask for the domain for this problem. And the reason I'm not going to ask for the domain is because really what the domain is, it's still going from negative infinity to positive infinity. Think about it. Don't you do this? And um, except now you got your asymptotes. So it's still going to be negative infinity to positive infinity, but you got to exclude these asymptotes here and we really haven't learned that's actually a second semester topic um, learning uh, sequences and series how to put that together so we're not even going to really worry about um, the domain okay what I'm going to worry about is the, the range now let's go back to look at this graph that I just drew here do you guys agree that when I draw that sine graph and then I draw my secant graph or cosecant graph it looks like this and like this so really what I'm doing is I'm looking for the highest point here, right? If I look for the highest point, then basically it's from this point all the way to infinity. And I look for the lowest point, which is going to be from this point here down to negative infinity. Okay? So really what you need to do is you need to uh, figure out the range for sine. So let's actually do that. So let's let's concentrate on cosecant, right? Uh, the range for the same function except for sine of x, we already talked about that, is from negative 1 to 1. Okay, that means uh, the range for y equals cosecant of x is going to be negative infinity to negative 1 bracket because it still, it still includes that point. Do you guys agree? It includes that point. Union, and then we start at 1, and we go to infinity. There we go. Done. What? Okay. So it's basically uh, you, the sine graph is really small, right? It's from negative 1 to 1, and the cosine graph is all the way from negative infinity because it does. It goes, it goes to negative infinity, right? All the way to negative 1, and then it skips it skips this part right here in between, and then it starts back at 1, and it goes to positive infinity. And that's why you have your, uh, your range for that. Okay? Now, the one other thing that I can ask you for this problem is I can also ask you... Um, well, actually, let's, let's, let me do one more example just to, make, just to kind of, you know help you out here a little bit okay so if I give you uh, y is equal to 2 plus 4 cosecant and again I don't really care what that is all right um, so again this is actually the first thing this is very same thing as my first example that I did with uh, with sine okay so do you guys agree if I look at sine um, if I look at the range I go, it's 2 is my dotted line, so I go up 2, and then I go down 4 from that, so my range is negative 2, and I go up 4 from that to 6. So this is really kind of what you want to do, guys. You want to look at your sine graph first, um, based off of that cosecant, all that other, that 2 plus 4, right? And then once you do that, it's easy. So the, the actual range for this function is going to be negative infinity to negative 2, bracket, union, Bracket six two positive infinity. Okay, all right, it's pretty easy. And you know, in here I can let's just do another quick one here. Right, negative fifteen minus eight secant of whatever. I don't care. Same thing. Okay, uh, I'm gonna ask you the range. 
and you're going to look at the cosine graph. And you're going to say, oh, negative 15 minus 8, so I'm going to go down to negative 23. I'm going to go up to negative 7. Negative 15 plus 8 is negative 7. So that's the range for cosine. That means the range for this graph is going to be negative infinity to negative 23, bracket, union, bracket, negative 7 to infinity. Okay? Pretty easy. Okay, so the only other thing I want to talk about with this, uh, with cosecant and secant, is I want to talk about um, the asymptotes. Okay, so let's do that. Um, so basically, think about an asymptote is basically wherever the function, wherever the function um, is undefined. Okay, whenever it's undefined, you got an asymptote. So you have to think, this is like chapter one. Where is sine and cosine? Because, of course, that's secant and cosine. It's reciprocal. Where are sine and cosine zero? Because wherever sine and cosine are zero, so let me write this out. Where sine of something is equal to zero or where cosine of something equals zero, that would mean that um, cosecant is undefined and secant is undefined, which would mean we have an asymptote. Okay? So that's kind of what you're doing here. You're saying, hey, where are they undefined? Where is secant and cosine undefined? Going back to the original one, where is sine, where are sine and cosine equal to zero? Okay, and wherever that is, that's where you're gonna find an asymptote. So I am literally just gonna ask you, math fans, hey, give me an equation of an asymptote. That's all I'm gonna do. I'm going to ask you for an equation. So I want you to find an equation of an asymptote. Which means, math fans, I'm going to put this in bold red. You're going to tell me x equals something. Okay, please do not forget the x equals. If you forget the x equals, you're going to lose a point because I'm asking you for an equation of an asymptote. Don't give me pi because I'll say, Hey, I like pi. Okay, but if you say x equals pi, then you say, oh, that's an equation. Okay? So, let's kind of do, let's do a problem here. It's very exciting. Okay. Um, if I do a basic problem, y is equal to cosecant of x, then I ask you for where there's an asymptote. Don't you guys agree that um, it's, you're saying we're sine, sine of x equals zero. And what is that? Where is it equal to zero? Well, isn't sine of zero, zero? So x equals zero, and where is, and sine of what else? Sine of pi is zero, and what else? Oh, two pi, okay? So, math fans, these are my asymptotes. Those are my asymptotes, and these are equations. Okay, x equals zero, x equals pi, x equals two pi. Those are all equations. Pretty easy, right? Okay. Let's do a little more complicated one. Y is equal to 2 minus 3 cosecant of 2 parentheses x minus pi over 2. What? So again, if I'm asking you just for an asymptote, you're, uh, this is this doesn't matter. Okay, I'm only concerned with this. So again, do you guys agree? It's If this is equal to, this thing I'm boxing right now, if that's equal to 0, it's undefined there. Because again, you have to say, where is it undefined? Where is cosecant undefined? Cosecant is undefined at zero, at pi, at two pi. So I'm literally gonna take that two parentheses x minus pi over two, and I'm gonna set it equal to zero, because that's where it's undefined. And where else is it undefined? Oh, at pi. Oh, where else is it undefined? Oh, two pi. Do you guys agree? It's always, if that value, that two parentheses x minus pi over two happens to equal to zero, it's undefined there. So there's an asymptote there, okay? So if I solve this guy, I divide by two, and I get x equals pi over two equals zero. X, yeah, x minus pi over two equals zero. So x equals pi over two. There we go, that's one answer. Okay, 
That's an asymptote. Okay, let's do this next one. Uh, I'm going to divide by 2. I'm just kind of running out of room. So x minus pi over 2 is equal to pi over 2. So x equals pi. So there we go. That is another equation of an asymptote. And let's do another one here. Let's divide by 2. So I get x minus pi over 2 is equal to pi. And then add pi over 2. So x equals 3 pi over 2. Okay. And that is another equation of an asymptote. Those are physical equations of an asymptote. So if I graph that original, that, this graph is 2 minus 3 cosecant of 2 parentheses x minus pi over 2, and I drew my dotted lines, right, for the asymptotes, they would be at x equals pi over 2, x equals pi, and x equals 3 pi over 2. Okay? All right, so let's just do one with, uh, let's do one with uh, secant of x. Okay, so y is equal to secant of x. And where's, uh, where's that undefined? Do you guys agree? Well, cosine, where's cosine zero? At pi over two and three pi over two. Let's just do two of them. Three pi over, well, yeah, it doesn't matter. Five pi over two. Okay, it's undefined there because cosine is zero at pi over two, three pi over two, five pi over two, negative pi over two, etc. Okay, so uh, here, these are your equations. If I just gave you a basic one like this, x equals pi over 2, x equals 3 pi over 2, and x equals 5 pi over 2. There we go. Those are equations of asymptotes. It's easy. So let's do a complicated one. y is equal to 8 minus 6 secant of 2x minus pi over 4. Okay, so again, I don't care about this for the asymptotes. Um, and remember, where is secant undefined? Oh, at pi over 2, so 2x minus pi over 4 equals pi over 2. Where else is it? Um, at 3 pi over 2. Where else is it? Uh, at 5 pi over 2. Oh, okay. So I can, I'm going to come up with three equations right here. See if I solve. So I get I add pi over 4, so 2x equals 3 pi over 4, and multiply by a half. So x equals uh, 3 pi over 8. There we go, that's one equation. Okay, add pi over 4, so I get 2x equals um, 7 pi over 4. Multiply by 1 half, x equals 7 pi over 8. There we go, it's another equation. And add pi over 4, so I get uh, 11, 2x equals 11 pi over 8, or over 4. And then multiply by one half, so x equals 11 pi over 8. Okay, and there's another equation. So those are three equations of asymptotes. Okay, pretty easy. Okay, so let's uh, let's look at as t a tangent. Okay, I don't want to make this video too long here. So real quickly, um, y is equal to tangent of x and y equals cotangent of x. So again, I will not ask for the domain. Okay, I won't ask for the domain. Uh, and the range is super easy. Think about what the graph looks like, right? So as a range, it's always going up to the positive infinity and down to negative infinity. So the range is always negative infinity to positive infinity. Pretty easy. Okay, and I'm gonna ask you for some uh, asymptotes. So let's do that. If I do y equals uh, tangent of x, again, you have to think to yourself, where is tangent undefined? Okay, you guys should remember that. Tangent is undefined, this is again chapter one. Tangent is undefined at x equals pi over two, x equals 3 pi over 2, x equals negative pi over 2. So math fans, these are all, these are all equations of asymptotes. Okay, they're all equations of asymptotes. That's a pretty easy one. So let's do a more complicated one. Um, y is equal to 8 minus 2 tangent of two parentheses x minus pi over four. 
Okay, so where, again, I don't care about this. It doesn't change anything, okay? And uh, so again, the range is from negative infinity to positive infinity, and I want to get an asymptote. So I'm going to have an asymptote at um, two parentheses x minus pi over four. Where is it undefined? Well, at pi over two. Where else is it undefined? Oh, at three pi over two. Okay, I can do the next one too, but eh, we'll just do two of them. Okay, and I'm just solving for x, and I'm going to get my asymptotes. So I multiply by one half. So x minus pi over four is equal to pi over four. So x equals pi over two. There we go. There's one asymptote. And multiply by one half, so I get x minus pi over four equals three pi over four. And then add pi over four, so x equals pi. Okay, there we go. There's another asymptote. Pretty easy. Easy is, it's, again, it's so easy to find asymptotes, guys, as long as you know where they're undefined. If you don't know where they're undefined, then you can't find the asymptote. Okay? But asymptote means, hey, this is where it's undefined. All right, so let's do a quick uh, cotangent one. So if I do y is equal to just a basically, basic cotangent x. Okay, where's undefined? Okay, you guys should know it's undefined at zero, at pi, at two pi, right? So the range, again, we said negative infinity, positive infinity, that's pretty easy. So uh, anyway, these are your equations of asymptotes. Now, if you make it more complicated, like y is equal to four minus seven cotangent of four x minus pi over two. Again, I don't care about this. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to say, hey, that 4x minus pi over 2 is undefined at 0 and at pi and also 2 pi and 3 pi and 4 pi. Okay, so let's just find two uh, equations here. Um, I'm going to add pi over 2. So you get 4x is equal to pi over 2 and multiply by 1 fourth. So x equals pi over 8. There we go. That's one... one uh, asymptote and then I'm going to add pi over 2 again to this guy here so I get 4x equals 5 pi or sorry uh, 3 pi over 2 and then multiply by 1 4 so x equals 3 pi over 8 and that's another asymptote okay so that's any that's it Matt fans 23 minutes and we figure out how to find asymptotes how to find domains and ranges for all the different trig functions. And you're going to be responsible for each one of those guys. Okay. The one thing I didn't really mention, which uh, now that I kind of think of, I talked about uh, domain and range, and I talked about maxes and mins. Okay. So let me just really quickly mention that. Right. If you know your range is from negative 8 to 3, I mean, it's pretty obvious. I just, I just want to mention it. But that's our minimum, of course, and that's our maximum. And if it's uh, it's like a secant or a tangent graph or a cosecant graph or a cotangent graph, there is no min or max because it goes to infinity and negative infinity. Okay? All right, my fans. That's it. I hope you uh, get all this stuff. Have an outstanding day. Adios. Goodbye.